I'm Anna Webb. Welcome to A Dog's Life. Mr. Binks, you know how I always say it's so important to keep up with the latest science and listen to the oracles that are breaking boundaries in natural healthcare. Well, that's why we're jumping on Zoom now to talk to Caroline Griffiths about her new exhibition called the Natural Pet Expo that's happening on the first bank holiday of May. Griffiths. Gosh, how excited am I to finally be chatting on A Dog's Life. Hi Anna, thanks for having me on. Well it's been a while since we've had a good old chinwag. Last time we were together was actually at the Natural Pet Show, wasn't it? The Natural Health Pet Show for Dogs and People in um, the Business Design Centre last June. In Islington. It was, wasn't it? Yes. You gave a great talk, actually. That was a lot of fun. Oh, no, it was. It was a lovely, I love, you know, obviously I love London. I love Islington. But the day, the first day, we had the biggest heat wave that arrived like a cyclone to London. And it was hotter, wasn't it, than the Sahara Desert. (laughs) Well, I didn't get to go out much, unfortunately. I love the sun. I mean, who doesn't love the sun? So, yeah, what a shame. But I was sort of stuck in for most of that. But um, I think because you came a little bit later, I think probably you you got to experience some of it. (laughs) Well, I know, but the nightmare was Angel Tube caught fire, didn't it? Did it? I don't know that. I didn't. Oh, yeah, no, Angel Angel Tube caught fire, nightmare, so it was shut, which, of course, I think was one of the main reasons, what with also the heat and people thinking, oh, gosh, can't face going into London when it's this hot. I think the visitor figures on the Friday, anyway, were, were moderate, weren't they? I mean, you know, I felt it was a terrible shame because the show oh was was so gorgeous in terms of exhibitors and all the speakers on both days but I think on the Friday uh, footfall was hindered by the the Sahara Desert temperatures. Yeah I think possibly it was I mean I hadn't been the years before so I mean I I really enjoyed it actually I always like going and and um, seeing who else is exhibiting and chatting to the other people that are exhibiting as well. So I did get quite a lot from that event. I I didn't go with them about this um, event that we're going to talk about today. I went about my um, retreats. I Mm, I know. I would love to talk a bit more about that. No, I think that show was in its first edition, actually, at the Business Design Centre. So, um, yeah, let's hope it happens again, you know. But, yeah, how was the interest for your retreats? Because you're quite multi talented shall I say (laughs) Caroline really multifaceted multi-talented and um, one of your your big projects have been you know many that we've been associated with over the years like Naturally Happy Dogs that online resource for example Mm -hmm. working at Nature's Menu Mm -hmm. our paths um, also crossed and then I know I should come on one of your retreats um, and I would love to so explain what what I'd experience on your retreats? So my retreats, they're called canine flow retreats because, well, for the last 14 years, I've been running them. And when I first started running them, I wanted to go on a retreat and take my dog because I'm a big fan of getting still, really. Um, I think we live in such a busy world that to find your still point, to meditate, to ground Um, you know connect with the earth and 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 really just sort of find your soul again I I love all that Um, um you know I'm a very busy person and I'm I'm well into all the science of nutrition and that side of life as well but I'm also really a big fan of being still again and what I've found is that my dog benefits the more I'm like that the more my dog benefits she she's calmer she's less anxious she eats better she travels better you know our general life together is boosted and I really wanted to take my dog on these retreats and I couldn't find anywhere where the dogs were allowed so I thought you know what I've got all the different 
um, sort of components to my life, really, of either understanding dogs, knowing how to run events, understanding this spiritual way of being as well. I thought I'm going to I'm going to put one on and they have been an absolute hit and they're always a sellout. I only ever do two a year, uh, one sort of April, May time. In fact, um, there's one in a couple of weeks um, and then I do one in the sort of September, beginning of autumn time. And um, yeah, they've they've kind of developed over the 14 years to the point where I now teach other people about what I call canine flow, which is a system of understanding dogs' vital life force flow. Um, so you could sort of a tiny bit akin it to qi um, in traditional Chinese medicine and that energy flow, but it's more connected with the dog's emotions and their behavior. And what I find is that when the dog's vital life force flow is challenged in any way, that's when they're more likely to show or display behaviors that we don't always find appropriate. Um, for the dogs, the dogs think they're great. Um, and, you know, like excess barking, chewing, digging in the garden, that sort of thing overexcitability, not getting on with other dogs. Oh goodness, so many dogs come on my retreat and they apparently don't get on with other dogs. And we work with them, balance up their life force flow. And it's not a healing method. I will say that this life force flow is a measurable thing, measured by the Institute of Heart Math um, with published data. Um, it's wonderful. It's, a, it's to do with the heart rate variability, actually, this flow of energy. And it's what keeps us all alive. You know, as soon as your heart's not beating and this heart rate variability and this, this magnetic and electromagnetic flow around your body isn't there, you're not alive. So this is about being alive and having this vital flow of energy through life. And when we rebalance that for the dog, which we don't need to do with any esoteric woo-woo stuff at all. There's lots of great um, tension pattern release techniques and things like that that we can do um, and, and little tools and tips, which I won't go into too much. But um, so you learn them all on the retreat. When we apply those, we find that the dogs completely change their behaviors and people go home with a different dog in the sort of five, six days. And amazing. Well, yeah. No, amazing. No, I love, I love the sound of all of this. I'm all about the vital force. I mean, that's the, and you know, in this energetic thinking of energy because that kind of underpins all energetic healing in all of their different ways. You know, it, traditional Chinese medicine you mentioned that is qi homeopathy it is vital force you know even in conventional medicine they call it ATP and it's this energy that without which you know the the moment you die suddenly there is no energy and I always think where did that energy go one second it was here and now it's not and wow. that's where you know <laughs> you can you know think about in terms of the Tibetan Buddhists, for example, that believe that the energy remains for 49 days close before it then goes on into the universe to create energy, the life force that is around us, if in electromagnetic fields and, and the like. So it is such an interesting concept, Caroline, you know, it's like the wheel of life almost. And, and to offer people these simple techniques, well, they're not simple, I don't mean simplistic, but that's, that's wonderful in line, really, with the big discussion at the moment, with dog behavior and living with dogs of the five domains, which is the latest technical definition of how we should really live with our dogs, ensuring that all of their animal welfare needs are really catered for, but on an emotional level as well. So it, it, the five domains takes everything a step further in a way from the five freedoms. I hadn't heard of the five domains. Who's published the five domains? Is this oh. our Species. crumbs it's been around oh, oh it's been around since about um 2021 yeah 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 no everybody yeah. I mean everybody <laughs> it seems um yeah 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 no google it I would I, um, I absolutely will because I think yeah because it, really it's like mental health now you know dog, oh. I mean look you know you see dogs on the ground every day you know on your retreats and so on so do I and and it is true that dogs are suffering I actually think from mental health caused by their pet parents not really getting what a dog is and what their needs are as a dog um, and really you know humanizing them to a level where the dog's happiness really and well-being can be compromised 
Mm, I totally agree. I, I do see that as well. And and we live such busy lives. It's hard to sort of sort of focus on that and and, and really sit with your dog and, and consider what it is that they they need. And, and emotions and the whole sort of understanding your dog emotionally, it, it can be hard to sometimes do that. What I've sort of noticed over the years is that dogs want to ground emotionally. So we ground emotionally by being creative. Um, so we might paint, we might play the guitar, we might, you're creating a podcast and that actually helps you to ground emotionally, believe it or not, because it's creative and you enjoy it and you get something from it as well as the, the people listening. So it becomes like a creative outlet. Um, and we can physically ground emotionally by hugging our friends as well. So we get to do that. And you know what it's like if you see a friend and you want to hug them, but you can't for some reason, you have that sort of funny feeling in your body and you almost have to sort of do a bit of a shake off you know like you see dogs doing all the time or you have to sort of do something with that energy like clap or rub your hands together without even really thinking you're doing this because you've had that vital force flow come up in you and you wanted to to ground that out emotionally um, and you couldn't do so dogs get this all the time and traditional dog training and i'm not saying i don't agree with any of it because we need um to, our dogs to understand our social situations and we've brought them into our house so there's a lot of learning and training that does need to happen to support the dog to, to live and coexist with us however it can be when it's only used it can be limiting because it, it almost um it, it gives a barrier and a compromise to the dog grounding their energy. The dog wants to go and take its energy to someone. Here I am, have my energy. Here I am, have my energy. Where shall I put my energy now? Where am I putting it now? And that's because they're alive and full of this gorgeous, vital life force flow and happiness. And I believe that the reason canine flow makes such a difference to dogs is because we're not only giving them that support with basic training um, and, and perhaps more than basic if some dogs need it, but we're also equally giving them those outlets to their emotional flow. Now, traditional behavior has pulled in a lot of enrichment lately and enrichment activities are primarily a grounding space for emotional flow. They do not tire the dog's mind mentally. They give that dog a sense of contentment because that dog has had an opportunity to ground out its vital life force flow its energy flow into those items that it's playing with or chewing or whatever it might be doing and that's when you get a content dog because if you send a child um, to do their homework just before bed okay they don't sleep as well as if you send them to climb trees or do something creative paint mm -hmm. So I think that's it. It's 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 getting out of your mind, isn't it? Really? Oh, absolutely. We're far too busy, Anna. Far too yeah. We put to the point where the mind is damn useful, isn't it? I mean, we wouldn't be able to do this without the mind. We wouldn't be able to create the technology to even have a Zoom without, you know, doing that. So, but we need to be in our hearts again. We need to rebalance because who we truly are as human beings is a heart-based being. And I actually personally believe that dogs are sticking themselves in front of as many people as they can because they are the heart of the earth they have the biggest heart per body mass of any creature and i think they ground us oh without uh, doubt caroline that's an interesting thought though for everyone that are that so so dogs have the biggest heart in relation to their bodies is that yeah, what you per yeah. body mass per body mass that's so interesting i really yeah. love that they're Let's, a walking heart <laughs> mm, i love that but we we know that i mean my listeners know that this is really great though but so how are we going to take this energy flow up to the natural pet expo caroline <laughs> so i don't know but i tell you what um i'll tell you what i can swing it anna because everyone listening as well one of the things i love to do for my energy flow and for my creative force is to run events i love to bring people together um, and i love to talk about dogs <laughs> who doesn't love to talk about dogs so to, to create an event like this and bring together, um, I've got lots of my students are going to be there. 
um, uh, uh, speakers that I'm friends with, other friends, and just having this wonderful event that's not only um, a friendship and happy event where we get to network and meet other people who love dogs and who love natural dog care, but also to educate ourselves and to keep learning. I don't think you can ever stop learning um, about dogs. There's all, already so much more science behind natural dog care. And I feel like to, to have this, cr this, this creation myself of, of, of creating this event is, is just wonderful for, for myself, you know? So, so um, well, no, it's great. And, and you have organized some super events, actually. Sadly, I don't think I've actually managed to get to either of the events you've organized. I know you, you did one up in Scotland, uh, did you not come to the one in the end? I don't know whether you did that we did in Birmingham. Um, 2009, was it? Um, 2009? Could have been. No, definitely not 2009. No, and I, no, no, no. I mean, the problem is, unless a, a venue is dog friendly, really, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to come. So I'm sorry, I won't be at the event in May, but that's not to say I don't think it's brilliant and that listeners who are able to get there really should. So tell us about the speakers that you've got on board. Okay, so we've got international vets coming over, holistic vets. So Who are they? Dr. Judy Morgan. Do you, mm. Yeah, do you, have you heard of her? So Dr. I have heard of Dr. Judy Morgan. She is flying over. Um, she's going to be talking to us about her work, um, some case studies, talking about ailments and how she might approach different ailments from a natural perspective. Um, so that's going to be really interesting. We've got uh, Dr. Paul Boland talking. He's been a holistic vet for the last 30 years in Merseyside. And his um, really big love to talk about at the moment is very trendy microbiome. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, so we'll be learning a lot about microbiome um, and gut health from Dr. Paul. Um, also, there's a lovely lady, Lisa Hansen. So Dr. Lisa Hansen, she's um, a vet from Denmark, but she also has a clinic in London. And um, she's going to be talking to us about homeopathy, actually. You mentioned homeopathy no, Lise is brilliant. Lise has done Lise. several podcasts, actually, Caroline. Oh, um, wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm a big fan of homeopathy. Um, I know many people find it a bit too, as you said earlier, woo-woo, but I've seen how it really, really works. And Lise is also so championing this obsession with um, neutering and spaying, because being Scandinavian, uh, she really adopts the Norwegian principle which is actually law in Norway that it is illegal to spay or neuter which I just love being half Scandinavian myself I, I really look to Scandinavia for so much you know great advice and practical effective solutions to living with dogs so that's really interesting and I'm sure she'll weave that in to her talks actually to spay or to neuter because science actually sadly really backs up the fact now that neutering and spaying can you know bring on early cancer yeah absolutely well it I mean obviously it imbalances the hormones which now hormones are like the chemical molecular counterpart of vital life force flow actually yes so well this is it and it's all about this holistic flow and looking mm -hmm. at yourselves humans and animals as holes and with everything no I don't mean holes like a hole in <laughs> fence. Yeah. I mean as a whole, whole being. As a, a whole being exactly exactly no brilliant so will there be nutrition advice as well or, or will that be covered by the microbiome um we've got Dr Connor Brady with us for the day so that's going to be a lot of fun um and he is actually hosting the whole event for us but it means he's on stage more than any of the other speakers <laughs> i'm sure he'll love it he'll, oh, he'll yeah. love that he's gonna he's great isn't he and he can really um talk about a lot of research and science behind fresh food feeding and understanding you know that kind of um, way of life with dogs so he's he's great for knowing the science and the which brings us to the next speaker um dr anna bjorkman now she is the lady who has actually had quite a lot of published studies out showing that fresh food feeding 
is beneficial to the dog as opposed to processed food feeding. So Anna's going to talk to us about her science, um, also the studies that she's got going on at the moment. Uh, she's a very busy lady, seems to have lots of, lots of studies, because I think gone are the days where we can say there's no science behind fresh food feeding. I agree. No, without doubt. I mean, there is so much. I mean, there's so much to highlight, you know, indeed how fresh food feeding can even prevent fleas you know because <laughs> Love fleas, yeah. you know so you could you could argue that feeding you know a raw species appropriate diet could work to help prevent fleas and if we're using flea treatments to the excess that imperial college has recently announced um to the point where you know it's totally killing our British waterways, mm. then we have to make adjustments as pet owners and cut back on all of these insecticides and pesticides routinely as well. It's a massive picture out there that I think needs, you know, re-looking at. Absolutely, it does. And the bees. Well, exactly. Well, imlia chloride, you know, one large spot on treatment, just one, say for a Labrador, apparently will kill 25 million bees, just the one. So imagine a Labrador being dosed with that, you know, 12 times a year. My maths can't, can't cope with that mm. amount of bees, but um, it's a lot of bees in one year that will be exterminated by one yeah. dog inadvertently, of course. So I think there's, there's, I, I agree. I think natural is now on the page, whereas 10 years ago, it, it wasn't still. But I think people have learned so much and a lot has been championed at a human level. There's been a lot of TV programs for humans about the dangers of hidden sugars in food and mm -hmm. I think that's shifting the mindset at the human level and until that happens we can't change it at the pet level because mm -hmm. obviously the human buys the food and feeds the dog so it's kind of got to be a big consciousness change which I'm hopeful is going to happen and no it sounds great so so basically Explain a bit how people can get the tickets for this event, what your website is, when it's happening, and all of these little logistical points. So the website's naturaldogexpo.com, naturaldogexpo.com. And yeah, you just hop on there and that's where the tickets are. <laughs> it's dead easy. Um, and, and it's just one day, is it? One packed day? Yeah, so 7th of the 5th, so 7th of May, which is a Sunday, um, and it's bank holiday weekend, so you've still got some time either side as well, which is quite good, really. I think if you're a busy person, um, otherwise losing a Sunday might not and where be. is it, Caroline? Where is it? Solihull, near Birmingham. Right, right. OK, so that's pretty central, isn't it, in England? Most people should be able to whiz up on the motorway or, or whatever to, to get there quite easily. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, there's parking at the venue. We've got some um, goodie bags with bits and pieces in them. Um, we've also put together, actually, I'll have to send you a copy as well. It's a, a little ebook that lists all of the existing science behind feeding fresh foods. So we've got, um, it's literally just a list. So the idea is that you will have this, this ebook um, and you can print it out if you want, have it in your handbag. And next time somebody's there with you or you're in the vets and they're sort of trying to say that they don't believe there's science behind feeding fresh whole foods to dogs, the person can take out the, the ebook and say, well, hang on a minute. What about all these studies? <laughs> What a great idea. No, do send that. That sounds absolutely lovely. I'd love to share that on my socials. And um, if there's a link to that that we could put in our show notes, Caroline, then um, it might be might be very helpful to lots of people. Yes, it's a free gift initially for the people that come to the expo. So you get a, a free copy, but then I think we'll probably do something with it where it's sort of available for a certain nominal fee, you know, um, and we will keep updating it as well because more and more science is emerging all the time. It is indeed. Well, on that note, let's hold that thought and encourage people to get up to Solihull mm -hmm. on the 7th of May, did you say? Yeah, 7th of May. So it's sort of half nine to five, six o'clock. There's um, a, a mini exhibition as well. So there's going to be some stands there. 
uh, for various different natural dog supplements and gifts and leads and harnesses, enrichment toys, get some of them, <laughs> um, given what I was talking about before. Um, and yes, yeah, there's even going to be some raw food, I think, to, to Great. So lots of different things. Oh, brilliant. It sounds super. It sounds absolutely super. Who's sponsoring the show, Caroline? Oh, lovely people, Lucellin. Do you know mm. the brand, Lucellin? Of course I know Lucillian. I know yeah. George awfully well. Yeah. I mean, it's um, it's a super idea, Lucillian. Yeah, yes. they're fantastic. So it's a great natural antiseptic skincare, um, which has really taken um, the veterinary industry by storm. It's a fantastic product. I know, most vets won't stock it, but apart from that... <laughs> well, they're not. Mine are. Mine have got it. <laughs> no, that's good. That's that's awfully good. But it's it's a great thing, and it harnesses a natural white blood cell, the hypochlorous. It works very, very cleverly, naturally, with your body. Well, look, Caroline, that's great. Have a brilliant show. All the links are going to be in our show notes, and I really hope to see you soon in London. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll come to London with the show next year. I think it's a great idea. There's the most dogs concentrated in the metropolis than anywhere else. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you. That's our show, Mr. Binks. What did you think? Yes, I know. We love your vital force and we've got to keep it vital for as long as possible. And you're right. It is time for Woof of the Week. Never get complacent about your dog. Read the science and understand how, by tuning in to a more natural approach, your dog may well live longer. <coughs> well, I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, go on, rate and review the show wherever you tune into your podcasts. Thanks again to Caroline Griffiths for joining us today and all the links to the Natural Pet Expo are in the show notes. Thanks, of course, to Mike Hansen, my producer, for all the music and production as ever. Find out more about him at Pod People UK. And for me, follow me on Anna Web Dogs. What's that, Mr. Binks? Yes, you're right. We will be back in your feed next Sunday. So why don't you subscribe now? It's free. And that way, you'll never miss another show. Bye for now.